What's going on YouTube? It's your buddy Will from the What's Up in the Sky 37 channel or online at www.whatsupinthesky.com and today is Wednesday the 13th. Uh, we still have electrical power. I am in FEMA region 3. I didn't think anything was going to get knocked out today. You won't find too much doom and gloom on my channel, let me tell you what. Um, so let's start with some of the space news. You know what we do here on um, What's Up in the Sky. We look at anomalies. We talk about some of the latest space news, what's going on, things I'm interested in. It's my channel. I hope you enjoy it. So I, th I saw this yesterday going everywhere. People kept saying, oh, the ISS had a virus. It's got the Stutnecks, just like this Russian power plant. Um, it's going to destroy, you know, it's going to come crashing down to the ground like in some movie or something that was supposed to happen before Ed Dame's kill shot automatically do McGloon. Let me tell you what, I, I, this, this all stemmed from a uh, speech given by uh, one of the, the Russian uh, top guys who does uh, internet uh, antivirus software over there, uh, Kaprikatsky or something, I forget how you say it. And uh, he was speaking, and when he was speaking, he had mentioned that, you know, the ISS, that these astronauts go on board there, and they, you know, have in the past brought viruses along, which is a technically true but we're going to read a little bit of this up to you no Stutnex did not infect the international space station so it won't be falling from space anytime soon because of it um okay the american made Stutnex virus has affected the internet space station it said extreme tech okay here we go let me read from just the beginning here just because this is basically this is basically what everybody else was saying yesterday it got me to extreme net Stutnex, america's nuclear plant attacking virus has apparently affected the iss trumpeted vice Stutnik's gone rogue. Um, a Russian nuke plant space station, uh, Times of Israel. So these people didn't do their research, and they didn't really take a listen. So, and I learned with the with the media after the uh, after RT, which I thought was a pretty decent outlet, um, ran my one my one helmet video and said I said it was a Nazi helmet. When I never mentioned Nazi at all, just to get that, just to put that word in there, so it would hit big and they'd get more publicity from it. So at my expense, you know. So either way, I never said it was a Nazi thing. So I can see how these things they just read what's going on and they come up with stuff. So that's why I like reading the articles a lot, like I do, and I give you a little bit of what I think. But anyway, here we go. All, all three cited the speech that uh, Eugene Kapersky, the head of the Russian antivirus firm. Kapersky Lab gave the Australian Press Club in the Canterbury Week last week. Um, but he never said Stunnex had affected the ISS. He offered two separate unrelated antidotes. And, and when Halley said it kind of made it seem like he was going from one to the next. The first was about a non-specific malware being carried on board the ISS by astronauts. The other was about the Stunnex affecting a Russian nuclear facility uh, network. So a virus in space. And now this just I'll show you this has been true apparently. So in 2008 a Windows worm designed to steal the online gaming credentials was found on laptops aboard the ISS. Apparently it uh, took a trip up there on a USB drive or something along those lines. So don't worry, it's not going to be falling out of the sky. I'll have this link below to space.com. You can read this. Um, and another one from space.com. Didn't have to go too far to find some interesting stuff today. Um, this is just talks a little bit about uh, choosing what you want, binoculars or telescope. I'm going to go out and buy a really nice set of binoculars for the comets that are out there now. Um, I've got a telescope already, and I'm really looking to upgrade my telescope. I'm still looking for somebody out there who knows uh, a little bit about, you know, the obsidian and stuff. I want to spend about $2,500 on something and have something nice. Um, I'd like to be able to post it to you guys so if i have to spend up to like five grand i will because i want to be able to tie this into my channel and uh kind of you know up kind of bring a whole new dimension to the channel um but they're saying that the best way to do this if you want to get the whole uh coma and the tail and everything the best way to do it is to use uh just binoculars and you get a decent brand um, you don't have to get the uh basically because if you're going to look at it with a telescope right now you're only going to get the small part like you can see the thing in the beginning which won't get to see the tail the coma and all that good stuff so if you're thinking about it it says basically uh um, which you can get in binoculars now. It's visible. You can go out this morning, and if you've got clear skies and light pollution, the one thing this talks about, you're going to need the sea ice on. You're going to need no light pollution. That's anywhere. No telescope, no nothing's going to make it better. Um, if you've got light pollution, you're going to you're not going to be able to see it. I mean, it just is what it is. Um, you want to get out, and here, like I said, anywhere within the United States or Canada, you're about 90 miles. You could always take a 90 minute drive and be out of a city and be able to see it. So if you're that interested in it, and want to do it, go for it. Um, 
But yeah, see, the most important requirements for successful comet viewing are complete darkness and a clear, unobstructed view of the horizon. Darkness is absolutely essential if you plan to get a good view of the tail. You would need that kind of dark sky where you would find the open countryside where you can look up and see a scary sky. All right. So uh, having a dark sky to work with would be a big plus because there's no obstacle instrument that can improve the contrast between the comet's tail and the bright background sky that's masking it. Um, like, you know, it's in the same wavelength of a uh, visual scale so the sec the best all-around instrument is a pair of binoculars um, <laughs> neophytes in the astronomy will likely find binocular wider range of field better suited for comet watching than a telescope they're also much easier to handle than a telescope and best of all they will show you all that's to be seen in the tail um, the standard seven power binoculars give you all the magnification you need. You really don't need much of an object that stretches across one sixth of the sky. It's a pretty big thing out there. Um, take note of the size of the lenses. Seven by 50 night glasses. The second number gives you a diameter in millimeters and the larger objective lenses can provide you with nearly twice the brightness of a seven by 35 binoculars. If you do decide to purchase binoculars specifically to view Comet Ison, be sure to go with a reputable brand. You might seek your advice for your local I mean, if you're going to give binoculars, get a decent, you know, get a decent brand. That's just said, um, you know, there's, there's four or five really good brands out there you can pick up. I'll let you guys know what I come up with. I'm going to probably go buy them on Friday. Um, I got, got the day off, so. All right. This is a good one here. I'm not, I'm, I'm not the only one talking about the ISRO and India's thing. I can't find anything on our mainstream media about it. I tell you what, India's about to take place among the stars. They, uh, the only people that have successfully made it there are Europe Russia and the United States, and uh, I mean, China's tried to go to, to Mars and has failed. So uh, more power to them. They are in the spot. This is a great article I'm going to link below about a lot of people are saying that with all the poverty and stuff there that they shouldn't be spending that kind of money on it or they shouldn't, you know, this is this is huge, and especially this talks about how they spend so much less money than NASA and stuff. Like this mission is nothing compared to some of the missions that we put up. Um, I mean, it, it talks about our local budgets. I mean, India has come a long way with this, and they're ready. December first, this thing's going to shoot off and take off into space, and I'm pumped. So keep going, India. You guys keep rocking and rolling. And what do we have here? It's the Maven. It's it's going to be traveling with the. Uh, they're both going to be traveling together, which is pretty neat. If it makes it out, if the uh, MOM, the the rover from India, makes it out on December first, it'll be traveling along with the Maven. Uh, and and of course, in the Maven, we've talked a lot about this. If you watch my channel, it's going to be sent out there. We won't keep getting pictures back from the from the Maven, but we're going to be getting a lot of information about the solar winds, uh, the way that Mars atmosphere and ionosphere interacts with the sun and the and the radiation. So and the plasma very interesting stuff so i'm really excited it's going to be a wonderful month for space wonderful hopefully great month for space news we're going to have the comet ison november 28th it's going to be getting close to the sun it's going to come around hopefully it's going to be bright enough to see and uh that we can all enjoy it so much love guys what's up in the sky 37 come check us online www.whatsupinthesky.com we'll always have everything you need if you wanted me to make a video for you you've got a crazy UFO video pictures from anomalies on Mars something you want to share with me my email address is will at willfarrar.net f-a-r-r-a-r -R -R -R. and uh, shoot me an email and you guys know I will definitely get to your video eventually I try to comment on all the comments um, when I get a chance I'm still getting used to this new comment thing so uh, it's still above my head, but it seems like I'm able to find more comments than I used to be, so it might be a good thing. All right, much love, guys. Take it easy.